Hey New Life, welcome to Online Church this week. It's so good to be able to celebrate with you today. If you are new with us, we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you want to get better connected with us, just click the link in this feed for our digital connect card. Go ahead and fill out that form. That way we can get your visit registered today. And if someone invited you to church today, now is a great time to leave their name in the comments thread. We are so excited for church today. So we're going to kick things off with worship.
His kingdom come. God has 
robbed the grave. Sing it out. Our God has robbed the
shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Jesus, we know that you've already won. You've already overcome, Jesus. Put the light in our eyes so we can see you through this darkness, Jesus. We know we have hope in you. The dark is night. You can light it up. You can light it up. Death is overcome, you've already won, oh God of a revival. Well, good morning. Welcome to our online service. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus spoke these words to a woman named Martha 2,000 years ago, and it's still good news today. When we believe, when we stake our claim on Jesus, put our confidence in Christ and his finished work on the cross, the resurrection power of God takes up residence in us. The Spirit of God, the presence and person of God lives in us. He is the guarantee of our resurrection, guarantee of eternal life. That's good news and that resurrection life starts when we say yes to Jesus and believe. So let's thank God for that this Sunday morning as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you that Jesus redeemed us from death and gives us life. Thank you for sending your spirit, your life-giving presence to dwell in us, encouraging us, empowering us, giving us hope for a future and for eternal life. We just Thank you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you this morning. And we all say amen and amen. Well, let's continue our worship as we present our tithes and offerings to the Lord and his work. We just want to thank you for your continued faithfulness to giving to new life. I'm overwhelmed by your generosity. Your giving is enabling us to minister to our church family and our community. Since we're not meeting in person today, you can still give at wearenewlife.church or you can text your giving to the number 84321, 84321, or you can mail it to New Life at 6115 Shattuck Road, Saginaw, 48603. When we give, we're just responding to God's grace. God gives, and his best gift is Jesus. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 9, 7 through 8, this is the New Living Translation, says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Let's just pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to give. Giving makes us more like you because you gave it all on the cross and continue to bless us each and every day. Lord, bless the gift and the giver According to your word, in your powerful name, amen. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah. It's been a while since I've gotten to see you at the Next Steps Well, but I wanted to let you know some next steps you could be taking even from home. If you want to learn more about the foundations of Christianity, or you want to become a member of New Life, this is an awesome opportunity to take our video-based basics course, so you can learn more about what we believe and what it means to be a member of the New Life family. If you're interested in serving at New Life, this is also a great chance to complete your divine design so you're ready to serve when we're able to meet together again. If you're interested in either of these things, head on over to wearenewlife.church and look under the virtual Next Steps tab to get started. Let us know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. First off, Amber, I want to tell the youth group, we miss all of you and we hope everyone is doing well. Hope you're staying safe, that uh, you're getting your homework done. Second, we want to make sure everyone is aware of our Instagram handle, New Life Saginaw Youth, and our new Facebook page, which is New Life Youth and Parents. We want to make sure that you guys check that out. It's the ideal spot. Both of these are the ideal spots for information and staying connected with youth group. Take care. Hey, New Life Kids and Parents. I'm Sarah McCoy, and I'm the Kids Director here at New Life. I miss you all so much and I can't wait to get back to Kids Church and Kids Crew someday. But just because we can't meet in person, it doesn't mean we can't still be together. Make sure you are a part of our New Life Parent Connection page on Facebook. 
We have fun live videos throughout the week where we go through our weekly lessons. We have worship and dance parties together and we have some fun prize giveaways. This isn't just for New Life families, so you can invite your friends to this page and have them join in with us. So come join us Wednesday and Saturday night and let's stay connected with each other. I love you guys. Please let us know if you have any prayer requests or any kind of needs uh, in your life by calling us at 989-498-0223 or by completing a prayer uh, info sheet at wearenewlife.church. It's easy, it's quick. Uh, just fill that out. It'll come to us and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. On weekdays, I'm leading a short devotional on New Life's main Facebook page, New Life Saginaw, 7.30 in the morning. It's the book of Psalms. Just find us at New Life Saginaw. Please join us and invite friends. I think it will encourage you. And we're still uh, taking collections for two different things, uh, the Rescue Mission and Life Clinic. So we're collecting uh, personal care products like razor, shampoo, soap, men's and women's socks, Tylenol, ibuprofen, cereal, tomato sauce, baked beans, green beans, canned chicken, and macaroni noodles, all for the Rescue Mission. So you can just drop those right off at the church and we'll get those right over there. And uh, we're also supporting Life Clinic by collecting baby formula and diaper wipes. So there's a big white box under the carport at church, 6115 Shattuck. You can just drop them in there. We unload daily. Uh, so feel free to do that. Thanks so much for being a blessing to so many. Now in just a moment, uh, you'll need to get your Bibles ready and open to Luke chapter 1038. But first we have one final announcement, babies. We want to introduce you to some beautiful new additions to our church family. You can ooh and awe in your house and also on the comment thread. So enjoy. Hi everyone, we're the Bowers. I'm Roger. This is Sarah. This is our newest addition. This is Renetta Monroe Bauer, born April 4th, 9 pounds, 21 inches. Hey New Life family, this is John and Dana Catch. Wanted to introduce the newest addition to our family, Little Miss Donna Lee Catch. She was born on March 27th at 2.44 p.m. She weighed seven pounds and four ounces and was 19 inches long. We can't wait to see you guys. Bye. Okay. <laughs> hey New Life, we're the Simmermockers and we'd like to introduce you to the newest member of our family. Her name is? Jubilee June. Jubilee June. She was born on March 25th six pounds, 10 ounces, and 19 inches long. She cries a lot. <laughs> we are the Dickinson family. We want to introduce you to the latest addition. Vivian Janae. She was seven pounds and 13 ounces. And 20 inches long. And we love her so much. That was awesome, you guys. <laughs> that was great. All right. That was perfect.
I hope you have your Bibles open to Luke chapter 10, verse 38. We're going to get to those scriptures in just a second. I'm sure everyone's heard of these two words, essential, non-essential. I think we've heard them over and over again, actually. Essential, non-essential. These words have referred to people, occupation, products, and activities. And with these designations, there are debates. What is essential? What is necessary? What is non-essential? What isn't necessary? Well, can we just cut through it all and get to the bottom line? Who or what is essential? Let's see what the Bible says about essential this morning. I'm going to set the stage. Jesus and his 12 apostles are teaching, healing, sending demonic powers running, traveling from village to village. The gospel, the good news, is advancing. Luke 10 38. Make sure your Bibles are open there. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. We know that the village was Bethany from other Bible stories in John 11. It's just a couple miles outside of Jerusalem. Luke 10, 38 continued, and a woman named Martha welcomed him to her house. So here comes Jesus and the 12 hungry men coming in. And Martha's going to open the doors of her home up and offer hospitality, which was very important in ancient cultures. So she welcomed them in her house as the hostess, and now she was going to minister to them. Luke 10, 39. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. So it's Martha's house. She welcomed Jesus and the boys, and here's her sister Mary. Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Now let's not just read past this. Let's not miss this. Jesus had many followers. The 12 were the closest, the 12 apostles. They were men. And ladies followed and supported the ministry of Jesus. And there were more men. 70 men had just been sent out earlier in chapter 10. But Mary sat at the Lord's feet with the men. And that's a powerful statement. It doesn't ring so much in our minds today because things have changed a lot in 2,000 years ago. But that was a powerful statement 2,000 years ago. Mary has taken on the status of a disciple. She is learning to be like her teacher, Jesus. You say, so what? Well, that wasn't done 2,000 years ago. Women didn't become disciples of rabbis. There's only one on record in Jewish literature of that period that I've seen, and it was a daughter of a rabbi that married a rabbi. So a little bit different. Mary's sat at the Lord's feet soaking in his words. The 12 apostles were probably scratching their head and asking themselves, why is Mary sitting here with us? But Jesus always had the disciples scratching their heads, doing things that they never expected. Now, we know from scriptures that Martha, Mary, and their brother Lazarus, who you might remember was raised from the dead later on, They were Jesus' friends. Now, maybe they were friends before this or became friends during this and continued in friendship. They were very close to Jesus. But regardless of the past, Jesus had Mary sitting at his feet. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. And maybe the men were saying, what? But so was Martha. Martha did what was expected of her. She took care of her guests. Mary did not do what was expected of her. She sat at the feet of Jesus. Every culture has expectations. Our culture has expectations. Martha being the hostess to a hungry man, that was expected. Martha's house, good chance Martha was the older sister, scrambling to get things done, guests to feed, offering a hospitality. That's a good thing. Expected. Was it expected? Yes. Was it essential? I'm not sure. But Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, not expected. Was that non-essential? Mary was not meeting Martha's expectations for sure. Have you ever been to a family event and somebody wasn't doing their share? You were running and they were talking and smiling and laughing. And you were running and getting and working and they were talking and smiling and laughing. Can you feel your face tightening? Maybe you have a memory of that. And you're sweating and you're tired and you're getting a bit frustrated because you feel like you're shouldering it all. I think that's the way Martha felt. Martha had enough. So she went to Jesus. Luke 10, 40. Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him, Jesus, and said, Lord, 
do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. Martha was distracted by all the work. Can you relate to that? To be distracted is to be over, over-occupied. There's one definition I've saw. Distracted just means you're overly occupied with something. Have you ever been so overly occupied with something, so distracted that you missed out on more important things like birthdays, anniversaries, family, church, rest, or God? Martha was overoccupied with the task at hand. Martha was the hostess. It was her house. But she went to the real host, Jesus, the one that actually had authority and influence in the situation. And she is bold, but she talks to Jesus like a friend. She puts her concern right out there in front of him. Lord, do you not care about me? That's what she was asking. Lord, do you not care about me? This is how you can show your care about me. Tell Mary to help me out. Now imagine Martha going, tell her to get busy, Jesus. She's a woman. She's my sister. Maybe Mary thought, and she's kind of lazy. Tell her. I need help. Martha asked Jesus because Martha knows that Jesus cares about her. But will she get the answer that she wants? Luke 10, 41, but the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. Martha, Martha, that's a tender response that Jesus gave. Jesus is the great physician. We could also go in the great psychologist. He says to her, you are anxious and troubled about many things, probably more than just serving this meal. Something is driving Martha so hard, she can't see it, even though it might be obvious. Can you relate? Let me ask you three questions. What was it like for you before COVID-19? Were you overoccupied with the tasks at hand? Question two, What is it like for you right now during COVID-19? Are you shutting the house, running like crazy at your job, running a schoolhouse for your kids and appreciating teachers more and more as each day passes? Are you distracted by all the news and announcement? Number three, what will your life be like after COVID-19? Shouldn't we give that some thought while we're walking through it? Are we focused on what is essential on who is essential? Martha had enough. She had her own little crisis going on. Lord, tell her to help me. Don't you care? Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, Jesus said. Were you anxious and troubled about many things before the coronavirus? What's changed now? Martha's troubled about many things, but Jesus says in Luke 10, 42, but one thing is necessary. She's troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. One thing is essential. One thing is essential. What's the one thing? Well, Martha is doing important stuff. She's offering hospitality. She is caring for Jesus and the apostles. That is important. But is it the most important? Is the most essential? Jesus says, Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. The good portion. What was the good portion that Jesus referred to? It was himself. Jesus was in the house. Mary wanted to be with Jesus. She wanted to hear Jesus. Jesus wasn't in the house every day. Mary wanted to make the most of the opportunity. Jesus was in the house. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to his teaching. She slowed down, she sat down, and she listened to the words of God. She chose the good portion, the essential portion. This desire for God's word was rooted in her culture, both Mary and Martha and Jesus and the apostles' culture. Deuteronomy 8.3, part of the law says, and he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, or bread from heaven, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread on ro- alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And that bread was coming right out of Jesus, the bread from heaven. And Mary was eating every piece as he spoke words. 
Mary slowed down. She sat down and she listened to every word that came out of the mouth of the Lord. That is essential. That is what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. We need to listen, and then we need to do. But then we need to listen some more, and then we need to do some more. But we always go back to hear Jesus. Other things are important, but being with Jesus and hearing his words is essential. How was your life before COVID-19? Did you slow down, sit down, listen to the words of Jesus? Or were you overoccupied with other things, running here to there and back again? If so, that's not the life of a disciple of Jesus. We are driven by so many distractions, secondary pursuits, misplaced priorities, and a long to-do list of activities. And it starves our time with Jesus. We turn into Martha. Some unmet, meet, unmet need is generally behind all that drivenness in us. But the ultimate need can only be met at the feet of Jesus. We need to slow down, sit down, and listen to Jesus. Jesus tells Martha that she is overoccupied, and Mary chose what was better, and it would not be taken away from her. I have a confession to make. I hated this story for most of my Christian life. I liked Martha. I think she was getting a bum rap for Jesus for decades. Mary needed to get busy. In fact, everyone should get up and start serving. That was my attitude. I first moved to Michigan in the early 1990s. I was transferred here to open up a store at the Bertrand Outlet Mall. First, we opened a temporary store and then a permanent location. I was very, very busy. That's when I first attended New Life. One of the people that I first met was named Bernie. He's a great guy. He's with the Lord now. Bernie was the head usher, and he taught me how to ush. At some point over the months and years that followed, he stopped calling me by my name. He no longer called me Ken. Anytime he saw me, he just called me Martha. Because I was like Martha in this story. Run, run, run. Sometimes forgetting what was most important. Sometimes I was scolded by more mature members of the congregation. Irene, a real prayer warrior, used to do that. She would snag me in the hallway, grab me by the arm, take her little finger, she was maybe not even five foot tall, point it at me and get real serious in the eyes and scare me a little bit as she corrected me that I was just too busy. I am Martha in recovery. I'm learning the value of slowing down, sitting down, and listening to Jesus. You might say, but pastor, you're a pastor. Yeah, for 20 years I've been a pastor. Pastors are busy. They read, they pray, they serve, they preach, they teach, but that is not necessarily the same thing as slowing down, sitting down, and listening to Jesus. Everyone needs to spend time with Jesus because they love Jesus, and Jesus loves them. That is the good portion. That is essential. It's not just about accomplishing tasks and activities. That one thing, being with Jesus, is essential for me, and it's also essential for you. When we don't spend time with Jesus listening to his words, we become overoccupied like Martha, and we experience anxiety. When you are overoccupied and anxious, you become blind to your own soul. Jesus told Martha that she was concerned about many things. I'm sure that her anxiety extended to other areas of life besides serving a meal to some travelers. This event just exposed her soul to public examination. Jesus speaks to the issue of anxiety, and I'm sure you've heard this scripture before. Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles are people that don't know God. Seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Jesus says you need to change your focus on those things onto the Father. Just, if we just focus on the issues, we get anxiety. But if we switch our focus to God, we get peace. He already knows what we need. Then he will help us see how those needs are going to be met or he'll just meet them. So we need to slow down, sit down, and listen. When we're overoccupied, we become finger pointers, just like Martha. Lord, tell her to help me. Can you imagine that picture? Luke 6, 41 and 42. Why do you, Jesus speaking again, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, 
when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. Slowing down has its benefits. The world has slowed down. You might have seen floating around on the news or social media pictures from the nation of India where the Himalayan mountains can now be seen from 125 miles away. That was not possible before because of pollution. But all of a sudden the pollution has decreased because activity has decreased. When we slow down, the pollution of distractions dissipates. Our soul clears out. Sitting down has its benefits. And the benefit is rest. We live in a go culture. I like going and doing, but we need to rebel against the culture. Mary went against the culture of her day. She sat at the feet of Jesus. Women didn't do that, and Jesus commended her for it. I don't want to buy into our culture's religion. I want Jesus. What is our culture's religion? It's activity. It's busyness. Kenneth Boas says, the civil religion of America worships the God of progress and inspires us to compete, achieve, and win for the sake of competing, achieving, and winning. Sometimes we don't even understand what or why we're doing what we do. Slowing down and sitting down are necessary to hear Jesus. A.W. Tozer wrote out a, a wonderful prayer I want to read to you. He says, Father, I want to know thee, but my coward heart fears to give up its toys. I cannot part with them without inward bleeding, and I do not try to hide from thee the terror of the parting. I come trembling, but I do come. Please root from my heart all those things which I have cherished so long and which have become a very part of my living self, so that thou mayest enter and dwell there without a rival. Then, shalt thou make the place of thy feet glorious. That sounds like Mary, who wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen, who rebelled against her culture that, that stereotyped her and locked her away so she couldn't be with Jesus. She couldn't be a disciple like the men. She pushed back. Jesus commended her. What gets in the way of you sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his words. Is it essential? Is it essential according to Jesus? Once Jesus asked his disciples if they were going to stick with him or leave him like some others had, and Peter responded, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter's right. Jesus has the words of eternal life. Jesus is essential. His words are essential. We need to listen to him. We need to resist the culture's push for more activity. We need to slow down, sit down, and listen to the Lord, just like Mary did. What's a good first step? We need to listen to him speak through us and the Bible. We can read the words. We can meditate on the words throughout the day, just reciting them and thinking about them. We can pray the words. The Bible is 66 little books in one big book. Now, while all the books are God's words to us, there are four books called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that are a really good place to start. They tell the stories of Jesus, just like the one we just read. I'd encourage you to start there. There's great technology out there now. You can download an app to your phone, a YouVersion Bible app. That'll help you. It'll even read to you the Bible while you listen. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and have a print version, which I prefer. We have all kinds of Bibles here that we want to bless you with. So if you need a Bible in the comment thread right now, I just want you to type in, I need a Bible. And this week, we will mail you one just like this. And then you can open up to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and you can start reading about Jesus and listen to his words. You can... It's just a great opportunity. So let us bless you. Now, maybe this COVID-19 thing has gotten you thinking. Maybe you're watching the service and you haven't been to church in a long time, but you're tuning in. I'm glad you are. You can start that relationship with Jesus or you can restart your relationship with Jesus. 
because it all comes down to slowing down, sitting down, and listening to his words. And what does Jesus say? John 3, 16 and 17, Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. He's talking about himself. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Those are the words of Jesus. He's talking about himself. He has the words of eternal life. He is eternal life for us. So how do you start following Jesus? Easy as ABC. You admit that you're a sinner and you need a Savior. Otherwise, you would never do this. You believe in what Jesus did. The Scripture tells us that Jesus died on a cross in our place for our sin, that he was buried on the third day he rose again, sent it into the heaven and is coming back. You just need to believe in what Jesus did. And you need to confess him as Lord, which just means you agree that he is who he says he was, which is God in the flesh, ABC. I want to pray with you right now. Maybe you've never done that before. Well, here's your chance. Father, we just pray together right now. We admit we're sinners that need a Savior. We can't do it on our own, Lord. You have to save us. You have the words of eternal life. We believe in you, Jesus. We believe that you died on a cross in our place for us, that you were buried in the ground in a tomb. You rose on the third day, proving that death has been defeated the devil has been conquered and you ascended into heaven coming back for us we believe we admit we believe we confess that you are the lord you are who you say you are you are god in the flesh and we want to follow you now lord show us how we thank you for it in jesus name amen now if you prayed that with me or maybe you're just starting your relationship with jesus for the first time or maybe you're kind of restarting because you got off track we have a gift for you we will mail it to you this week. It's just called the Easter Challenge. We just celebrated Easter a few weeks ago. And this little book will help you slow down, sit down, and listen to Jesus. How do you get the book? All you need to do is in the comment thread just said, I want the Easter Challenge. We sent a lot out already. We'd be more than happy to send one to you. If you want this book and a Bible, you just let us know. We'll send you both. So we want to be a blessing to you. And we just so appreciate you joining us today. I want to ask the Lord to bless you all today. Based on the scripture, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Join me Monday morning on this Facebook page, 7.30 a.m. for devotions on the book of Psalms. Have a great Sunday. God bless you all. That concludes our online service for today. Thank you so much for being here. And if you prayed that prayer with Pastor Ken at the end of service, or if you have any questions or if anything during service impacted you, please let us know. Send us a message. We would love to get better connected with you. And if you want one of those books that Pastor Ken mentioned in the sermon today, just leave a comment of which book you'd like in the comments thread, and we'll be sure to get that to you right away. We hope you have an excellent week. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next week.